Hello and welcome everyone, this is Levi here bringing you another Blender tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how to make realistic renders using the default render in Blender or improving on your current renders. Here is the final result as you can see. It's got some depth of field, some glow effects, and overall it looks fairly realistic. Obviously you can still tell it's a 3D render, but personally I think it looks good. Now to start off, I'm going to go to my scene and just show you what the layout's like. I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step from start to finish because that would take too long. It's going to take probably 5 to 10 minutes as it is. Basically the setup, this gun and these bullets, both of those I got off of TurboSquid.com, including the textures, except the textures on the bullets I made myself. Well, there's not really a texture, but the colors. The piece of wood is also from TurboSquid. Make sure when getting textures, you have them high resolution, so they show up very crisp and clear in the renders. That helps adding to the realism. This picture right here, these wooden boards, it was simply a diffuse map. I took this picture and I opened up Crazy Bump, which is a piece of software that turns regular images into spectral maps, or excuse me, specular maps, normal maps, occlusion maps, and a couple other kinds. You can download it for free for the first 30 days. Sadly, it's only a trial. The full retail version costs like $200, so it's a bit pricey. It's really effective, and if you're a professional, it might be worth the price. But as you can see, normally this wood, the reflection on it would be like plasticky, completely smooth. I don't know if you can tell, but there is a little bit of bumps and grooves where the wood is, and it just gives it a nice realistic look. Also, there's a sky dome here. Some call it a sky box, but this is kind of a dome. That's something else you want. I'll put an annotation on the screen to a tutorial how to make one of these. It will basically give your reflections something in the sky to reflect, so it's not just one pure color. A great thing to do, if you have a reflective material, like a bullet casing, make sure you go into the material settings, click on mirror, and give it some reflection. Because well, it looks good. Now, if it's kind of like a brushed metal, where the reflection's not very clear, lower the gloss, something like 0.8, or more depending on how much you want it to be, but that basically blurs the reflection. Let's say the material was glass, high quality glass, the reflection would be set up high and the gloss would be to one, which is no gloss. And make sure you also increase the samples. It's a default at 18 samples. It looks really grainy at that point, so you want to push it up to 64, anywhere to 512 samples. That's a really intensive thing for rendering, so it really increased the render times. So if you can, avoid doing gloss. Next, ambient occlusion. I've done a tutorial for this before, but make sure you get ambient occlusion on. It really makes things look nice. I personally prefer to have the scene lit normally, have ambient occlusion set to multiply instead of add, and increase the samples somewhere around 15 to 20. If you're doing a 3D movie and you don't want to spend a lot of time rendering, you could lower that some. But the higher samples, the less grainy and more realistic it will look. Now, as you can see, this scene is kind of dimly lit, and that's what I was going for. So you want to make sure your shadows kind of reflect the rest of your scene. Just click on your light and go over to your settings. And in shadows, normally it's set to 1 for default which the shadows are basically really crisp, but they don't look realistic. In certain situations they can. But make sure you push up the samples. The higher the samples and the higher the soft size, the more your shadows will blend into the rest. Mess with energy settings. If you want something to have a really high specularity, make some duplicates of the light and uncheck diffuse on the duplicates. Say you're doing like a shiny text, you might want to have a couple lights that are only specular. I've done that a couple times. I think it has a nice effect, but it's not right for every occasion. Another great thing is depth of field. Split the area, right click and split area. I'm going to turn this one into a node editor. Just click 
over here on the two pictures, click Use Nodes. By default, it has Render Layers and Composite. I've added Brightness, Glare, and Defocus. The glare, you can't really see it very much here, but it makes kind of like a bloom effect, if you know what that is. The brighter areas glow slightly. Defocus is the depth of field, which adds blurriness to objects. And brightness and contrast changes the brightness and contrast. You can actually just skip that and use an editor, a photo editor, After Effects, whatever you want to use. But I just did it inside of the node editor. To do these effects, all you have to do, for instance, for brightness and contrast, go to color. Add a brightness and contrast, connect image to image, and this image to this image, and bam, it's done. Obviously, you have to adjust the brightness and contrast settings. If you want, I think you can even click on it and drag it over the already existing line. Sometimes it will auto-connect all the images for you. Uh, glare, all you have to do is go to Add, Filter, Glare, and same with the focus. Now, how these should be set up, quality, medium is all right. High, obviously, better quality, but it increases the render time a bit. The alliteration, uh, that's how many times the effect is applied. Streaks, that's how many light streaks. Uh, you can't see it now because the whites aren't bright enough in this image. But trust me, if you have some real contrast between light and dark, those will show up. Defocus, click Gamma Correction, use Z Buffer, and uncheck Preview and set it up something like this. The less f-stop, the more blurry it gets. And you may want to use max blur and play around with the threshold because there is errors with this sometimes where parts won't blur that should be blurred. It renders almost like a double image looking thing. So just make sure you play around with the settings a lot. And also never forget to connect the Z to the Z, which is Z depth by the way. I'm going back to the 3D view for a moment. When it comes to depth of field, make sure your camera is selected, click limits, and then play around with the distance right here. And make sure you get this yellow plus or cross to wherever you want the least blurry. It will be in perfect focus there if it's set up right, and then objects to the sides of it will blur. There's also one more cool feature. If you go to distort lens distortion, you can have an RGB split on the corners of the render, but I chose not to do that for this render since I already have depth of field. Also another thing when it comes to the camera, make sure you get the right focal length. I'll just show you what it does here. It kind of changes your perspective. If you want to do like a wide angle lens look, you can adjust the focal length, play around with that until you find something that looks best. And something to never forget, always try and go for a realistic look if you're doing a realistic render. You know, try and match up, uh, go on Google Images, find out what something looks like in multiple pictures, and then try and recreate that. Never just go off memories. That's usually a bad idea when trying to make something look realistic. So this was a couple tips to help you out. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Peace out.